Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the fourth Saturday of the month, which means it's time for the Autoimmune Recovery Hour with Dr. Melissa Mandala. And today she is going to be making from her kitchen anti-inflammatory recipes for autoimmune diseases. Please welcome Dr. Melissa Mandala from Dr. Melissa's Kitchen. Hello, hello. Good morning. Thanks, Chef AJ. It's a beautiful day, and I can't wait to get into not only the summer mood, but also show you beautiful recipes that can really come from our Mother Earth, right? From the soil, whole food, plant-based eating. I'm going to do no salt, no oil today, and that's kind of part of it because we, we want to be able to be creative with our spices that are anti-inflammatory. So I'm so excited to be with you all this Saturday morning and share something really special because to me, I I love Buddha bowls, or you can call it goddess bowls, um, any type of bowl, which is rich in a grain, a healthy whole grain. And then I'm going to add some greens, and then I'll be adding some other sweet potatoes um, starches in it. So you're going to see it come to life. It's really popular when you go out. So I wanted to just teach you how to make it from home. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, let me know, um, you know, if anyone has questions, I love to just share um, anti-inflammatory, I would say ingredients. Um, everyone has different autoimmune diseases. Thank you for tuning in from the other lectures and each recipe, I would say it needs to be customized at the end of the day, according to your flavor, according to what you have in your kitchen and maybe in your, in your grocery store. So don't feel limited about any of these ingredients. You can get really creative and add some more depth or you can take one or two away if you do have allergies so let me know um, if you have any questions along the way and then I'm going to start this bootable thank you there was a few questions that were submitted but yeah. we'll get to them a little bit later in the show okay sounds great Thank you. So um, the first thing is when it comes to a Buddha bowl, uh, I did this overnight. I just got a mixture of uh, brown rice. So brown rice can either be in the short or long grain form. I use the short grain. That's kind of just from my Asian background. And then I mix it with quinoa, which is a pseudo grain. And that's really nice. You can do and you just mix it around. I had this overnight, soaked it and cooked it in my Instapot, which is so easy. 15 minutes. It's nice and soft and moist. Um, so I love that. And then I'm going to start with my other ingredients. Um, so I like to get a mushroom and sometimes I like to get two mushrooms. So this is a shiitake mushroom. Mushrooms are wonderful. Um, they smell good. Um, and they also remind me of just a lot of, I would say, um, it's a beta glucan. So it's it's a lot of substance that can really fight inflammation. It also helps fight um, viruses um, and bacteria. So it pretty much supports the immune system and to even release natural killer cells. And this cute guy, <laughs> this is a mini um, oyster. We usually see king oyster mushrooms, but this is like a mini one. <laughs> that is so funny that you're using those because I literally just found them in an Asian market and I was so excited. They're like this long because yes. one of the local chefs who's Vietnamese uses them to make noodles for his pho. And mm -hmm. he, and he, he uses a julienne peeler. And every time I tried to do it, it got stuck in the blades. And he said, well, I'm the only one that can do this apparently. But so what I did is I chopped them up and I have them marinating tonight in some California balsamic teriyaki. And I'm going to use them for dinner. They're really, really meaty. Yeah, I love them because they like some, um, for example, some people use that as their meat substitute, like instead of beef steak, I use a big king mushroom steak, um, and then just marinate it with a bunch of onions. So I love how you found it. Yeah, you can get at the Asian store Korean Mart. Um, and they're really cute. They have a little button on top. Um, and then with shiitake mushrooms, you know, I don't like to waste the stem. I just like cut the a little off on the edge and then I start um, cutting it away. Um, so you, you just literally have to use a quarter of an inch um, in size and you just let that happen and glide with your fingers um, kind of and you, I like to kind of create a knuckle <laughs> and then let it slide. So. I have that cooking on the side here. And then when it comes to um, shiitake mushrooms, you know, it, it, they come in different sizes and small, large, it doesn't matter. You're getting 
good substance anyway. Sometimes people like to soak it overnight um, and save the mushroom juice because the mushroom juice is actually really tasty. You can use that as a marinade or you can use that as a broth uh, for your flavors um, of your dish. So I don't really like to waste the mushroom taste. Um, sometimes mushrooms come in a mushroom powder when she makes it easy um, or a dried mushroom and that just is soaked overnight. And that's how you get your mushroom broth as well. But this is a fresh shiitake uh, mushroom and it's just so nice. It's one of the richest flavor that I that I think and maybe Chef AJ knows others, but it's just so uh, pungent and, and rich. So um, I'm gonna slice these and then when it comes to um, these mushrooms, you know, not many people have allergies against mushrooms. Um, and if you do have allergies, I would say find what you are not allergic to. Sometimes you find um, other species in the fungi family. Um, you know, there's enoki mushrooms um, that you can try that are a little thinner, maybe less pungent. And you might like those first because they're a little blander and then you, maybe you're not used to the shiitake like earthy flavor. Um, so Maybe start with me the white mushrooms um, and then move up to the darker mushrooms and then your palate can adjust to that flavor. The king's mushroom is really simple. Um, these mini ones, they don't really have too much of a flavor, but it, it gives this a little bit more character and depth with, I like just different textures in my Buddha bowls. Um, you'll see most of my recipes can be really simple, um, but if you like a lot of uh, different ingredients because I love getting plant diversity and feeding the microbiome, um, then you definitely want to be able to add um, various species of whatever you're making in your dish. So I'm going to cut away um, and add these um, mushrooms. And then I have some carrots on the side too. So carrots are your beta carotene, right? They look like eyeballs, literally. Um, and they're amazing. <laughs> I never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like these little, you know, right, this, the, the little white part that gets darker in the end. It's really great because it's for your eyes. Anything orange, like even papayas, um, mangoes, they all have rich beta carotene. And there's studies that actually not only helps with inflammation, but reduces risk of um, breast cancer. So for our ladies out there, um, load up on your orange. Think about, you know, those pink flamingos. <laughs> um, that's what they eat. Um, so we're going to have, once again, your shiitake mushrooms, your mini king oysters, and your carrots on the side. And with carrots, you know, I don't really like to peel the skin because everything, look at this, there's fibers on it from the ground. I don't really like to waste. Um, carrots are rich also in zinc um, and magnesium. So what I do is just, I scrub them really well and just wash off the dirt and then you're good. Um, so just chop that away. Um, you know, some people like pre-cut carrots. There's different colors, right? There's now purple and, and yellow, each representing different parts of the rainbow, all those phytonutrients. So that can be fun. Are you saying that the reason flamingos are pink is because they eat carrots? Yeah, <laughs> they do. Did you know that? <laughs> I, I mean, I knew that I did not know that. Yeah, it's so, isn't it fascinating? I wondered the same thing. I went to the zoo when I was a little girl and I asked them, why are they like, some are pink and some are like, you know, a little paler, but they're pearl white <laughs> and they feed them these. <laughs> you learn something new every day on Chef AJ Live. Did you guys know that was the reason they were pink? <laughs> and pink's my favorite color. And it like, then when you eat it, well, when the Flamingo eats it. They just turn a nice pink. Well, it's like that's why you know some people when they eat a lot of carrots, their their palms turn orange. But that's nothing to worry about, is it? No, it's not. It's you know, it's it's just a kind of a, a cosmetic thing. Just like with turmeric, sometimes we feel a little bit more bronze, <laughs> um, and and that's okay. You know, what really matters are what's in the inside, right? How your labs are doing, your your function of your kidney and your liver. And then if you're feeling great physically too. Um, and, and that's the wonders of food. It becomes part of us. Our cells consume it. And it, it's, it's shared in every part of us that even our skin can glow um, in a certain way, in a certain color. So when you, so these carrots are really fresh. Um, I don't really like to cook them too long. You want it nice and 
crunchy. So we have the base and then I made this um, overnight in terms of I washed it down. So this is bok choy. Bok choy is wonderful because it's a cruciferous vegetable. Most people know cruciferous vegetables as broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, but you can also get them from bok choy. These are the, the bigger ones. Um, sometimes you see the mini ones. Those are good too, because they're easy to chew. Um, mm -hmm. I probably won't be yeah. slicing this down just because it it's nice to see it all in a pot. Um, I have a skillet. Some people can use the large wok, whatever you have at home, it's okay. Or a, a bigger dish, or a bigger pot, use what you have. Um, so that's going to be used on the side. Um, and then I'll be preparing some, you know, some people like to add other things like seaweed and mango, but let's do it. I'm going to turn on the stove over here. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. I'm going to heat this up over here. <laughs> Got my water. So cheers. You can drink it, but I will be using it <laughs> for my dish here. And, um, you know, I'll pro probably put it on medium heat um, when you're making some type of asian dish i always say um, enough heat to to make it brown and you want it to be a little bit sweet um if you, so often garlic gets overcooked and it turns bitter so you just want it to be sweet enough to bring that out um so let's get that kicking um and then when it comes to the seasoning I'm going to be using, I'll be using various seasonings. I like to use um, sesame seeds. There's black and a little toasty brown. Um, that's a fun one. So that's on the, on the side here. And then I like, this one's kind of easy. It's like eat and shake because it has um, a mixture of the black and the roasted um, sesame seed along with a little bit of the seaweed. Um, and this has specifically the, the pickled red shisho leaf. So it doesn't have any added um, salt or sugar or MSG. That's like, you know, I wanna be careful about MSG. Um, that's the neurotoxin that inflames your brain. <laughs> um, we don't want that. So you can pick any of these, um, or um, I actually got this one. I don't know if anyone's been to Hawaii. Have you been to Hawaii? Um, I Chef love AJ. Hawaii. Yes, I've been to Hawaii a few times. I love it. You will like this. This is called a superfood for a kake here. Um, and this has toasted sesame seeds, toasted macadamia nuts, raw hemp seeds, um, raw um, chia seeds, and toasted nori. Um, so um, that one's like a fun one. All right. So this is going to be, this is ready warm. Let's add some of that water. Ooh. This Hot and steamy. Okay, so it's ready. So what I'm gonna do is go um, put that a little pinch of garlic. I I would say this is a quarter of a clove. It was a really big clove, so <laughs> um, we'll put that in, and then we'll go for the crunchier veggies first. Maybe let it sizzle for thirty more seconds <laughs> over there. I love the smell of garlic and garlic is great because it's once again anti-inflammatory. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, it helps fight infections, helps fight inflammation, and you can put it in a lot of your dishes. Um, some people um, skip the onion. Um, I don't have onion for this dish. I, I don't think we need it. Um, I, garlic is just enough. And then let me find my little, there you go. So this is a stainless steel top here. Um, you want things to be non-toxic. All right, there you go. Now it's sauteing here. And we're gonna put a little bit of um, the carrots. The carrots take a while, so we'll put that first and then we'll put the mushrooms next and just let that sizzle on. Um, and that gives it a lot of flavor. A lot of people like to cut their their carrots in different ways, you know, like um, Chef AJ was saying, like the Jillian way, or there's different different ways. But I like, you know, just these little circles. Okay, so that smells so good. I don't know about you, but whenever I go to a restaurant, I'm always trying to not only look at the the sign that says vegan or vegetarian, because you want to look for a leaf and that kind of narrows it down. But I also like to um, ask the chef certain things, um, how how I would like to it made. So definitely you can reduce the salt and oil or just say no, um, or you can ask them, 
and kind of be curious, see what kind of soy sauces they use. Um, because most of the time, soy sauce has a lot of sodium. Um, I, I do like mushroom based um, or cocos aminos based um, soy sauces. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Well, we do, Dr. Mandala, we do have three questions that were sent in. They're not necessarily on the recipes, but I was just waiting to see when you would prefer to answer. Sure. Them. Okay. Terrific. The first one is how would you treat oral lichen planus? I hope I just uh, pronounced it correctly. Yeah, that's a tricky one. You know, for rheumatologists and dermatologists, it, um, and even primary care doctors, we see it and, you know, there are medications for it, but when it comes to lifestyle and whole foods, um, it, there's there's not a lot of studies that specifically look at that disease and and see how which plants or foods or spices help um, treat that. Um, and that's probably because most of the time, um, you know, there there's not a lot of funding for for such types of studies, but um, at the same time, it's a very specific, it's a pretty rare, but it does happen. I would say reducing the inflammation is key. Sometimes even reducing stress is a big piece of it. I have patients with full blown eczema, rosacea, um, and you know, they're doing everything right. They're eating well, they're exercising, but their sleep and their stress are things that they, they lack. Um, and if that's, Typically, because of modern society, they're on the go. Um, they're maybe doing so much that they leave no energy at the end of their day. So one of my tips is just you know, really take some time to slow down, um, put that pause button, and leave some more energy in your little battery cell because we need that to heal. We need that to get ourselves to bed. So if even if it's half an hour, I meditated last night for an hour. <laughs> I know me and Chef AJ love yoga, but, you know, meditation, sleep, rest, that is your best friend. And that can really help heal the inflammation. Fantastic. You guys work virtually, you and your husband, Dr. Yu, or do you just see people in person? We do both. Um, so our clinic's in Newport Beach. Thank you for that question. Um, we have a nice little clinic and you can come in person. People come from all over California and even different states. Someone actually came from Guatemala the other day <laughs> to visit. Um, and so, yeah, we, we just make it happen um, wherever you are. Even if you're traveling on the road, we'll come see you or meaning through, through virtual <laughs> medicine. Fantastic. Here's a question from Audrey, and she says that she has Hashimoto's thyroiditis and been taking levothyroxine for 30 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, she gave up gluten and she's been able to reduce her dose from 150 micrograms a day to 75 in the last two years. She's been whole food plant based. And she is wondering, is it possible like to ever get off the medicine completely? And how would she do that and wean herself off? Yeah, thank you so much. I you know that's a great question, and I love um, because love it because you know a lot of people are diagnosed with Hashimoto's and their TPO, their thyroid proxies and antibodies can be really high. Um, and you know the goal is to bring down inflammation in the TPO, and it is possible um, to reduce inflammation and also support it with healthy minerals. So our thyroid, our queen or king thyroid, is really really needs um, certain, I would say, minerals. So zinc, um, magnesium, selenium. So I would get your levels checked and see, um, you know, there might be deficiencies, there might be excess. Um, and it's really um, looking at the whole picture because, you know, a lot of times um, when you, we see certain doctors, they may not know um, all the all what's affecting the thyroid. So if you can get some more specific tests and look at your minerals, it's definitely possible. And I help patients with that um, in Dr. Lysel's clinic. Thank you. Uh, this one uh, is from Stephanie, and she says she's 56 you're a female, strict, whole food, plant-based. And she says she has a debilitating neurological autoimmune rare disease called Morvan's disease and a secondary being stiff person syndrome. She's tried all standard treatments and they've been unsuccessful. She's in pain 24 seven. I'm so sorry about that. Her BMI is 11. That's, that's really low. Oh, that's really hard. Um, she says she does not eat anything animal-based, no oil or sugar, but she does eat fruit, but I guess all her doctors think she needs animal protein for her neurological system, but it's not an option 
for her. Have you ever heard of this disease? And do you have any suggestions? It's been nine agonizing years. That's got to be so hard. So sorry about that. Well, yeah, that, I'm so sorry. That is a difficult um, place for you, right? And the disease and the pain um, sounds like the nourishment of your, your body, your gut, your immune system is something that needs to be uh, addressed. Um, and I know it can be really tricky because maybe there's underlying dysbiosis, your gut might be inflamed, therefore your other systems might be inflamed and you're not absorbing the nutrients that you need. You know, there is a balance of getting healthy protein from plant-based eating. Um, it's something that we, we do address and making sure that you, you know, it's calculated by either your age, um, your activity level, um, and certain, I would say, conditions, you may need it to um, support your DNA, because if you're, you know, your muscles are also protein. Um, so we need a mixture of muscles, bone, um, and even healthy fat, right? So I would say the biggest thing is lowering not only the inflammation, but really finding out why you're not absorbing nutrients. Um, and sometimes that disease, and Dr. Yu, he would be the specialist in this. So I don't want to um, be, uh, I would say, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing that's not backed off by science, but the biggest thing is to make sure that you're, um, find out why, why it happened. Is it genetic? Is it an exposure from chronic, from a an uh, infection from before, um, is it mold? Um, knowing why is, I would say, the most important thing. And then we um, figure out the best treatment. So maybe she should book a consult with him. And I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's really hard. Um, and I hope you can get some support. Um, sometimes it takes multiple team members and multiple opinions to get to that place of healing. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, I put my carrots here on the side, they're ready to go. They're, they're soft enough, um, to bite into, um, and they're sweet, um, and a little crunch. I like a little crunch. Um, everyone's different. Some people like to have it soggy, but I like it a little bit, but it retains, um, half a crunch and half it being soft. Um, so some more garlic, that's my best friend. And now we're going to add the mushroom, add a little bit more water. I love, you know, when you go to hot pot places or certain restaurants, I love the steam <laughs> that just bubbles up. So we're going to add the mushroom. I'm going to mix them. Actually, no, I want it separate because it's going to look prettier. I'll do the shiitake mushroom first. And that's the the secret to a but uh, a Buddha bowl is you cook each ingredient at a time um, so that it looks nice on your bowl. And you can pick and choose how you want to um, portion it out in your bowl. So add that here. And that is now is the time to add some of our spices. So um, I, like I said, I have a various amount of spices. Um, I'm gonna first use a uh, nori. Um, it's a seaweed snack. This is natural iodine and without using salt. Um, and what you're going to do, just get a few of these nice squares or rectangles, and you're just going to crumble them on right here and put that on your mushroom. So that's, if you don't have like a shaker, you can't find, you know, seaweed, vegetable, or furukake, any of these, you just get seaweed and then just crumble it all up <laughs> and put it in there. Don't you love playing with your food, Chef AJ? Like, that's the best part. Seriously. It's like, ah, and you know what? good. I, I thought you were pulling my leg about the flamingo, so I Googled it, and that's exactly why they're pink. But why are they pink instead of orange then? I think it's an enzyme. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but it, it might be how their enzymes are metabolizing the beta carotene. <laughs> I never knew that. That's so funny. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I know. What if they, what if they ate something else? Like if they had like spirulina, what color would they be? <laughs> or oh, the, the, green, the green flamingos. Yeah. <laughs> I always, I love color. So it's, it's just fun to see like how people metabolize things. 
Oh, look at this nori. Oh, like it's so beautiful. It's just, it's blended nicely. I wish you could see this. Well, actually, I can show it to you. Can you see that? Ooh. Okay, that is what's happening on this skillet. <laughs> And I love cooking like this because you you can really see it come to life. In my cooking show, I'm a little bit faster. Like literally my videos are like five minutes. So it's because I talk a lot about the health benefits um, and I kind of fast forward. But I love this like slow, realistic way of cooking because it's not always 10 minutes like the recipe says, right? You got to be real. You got to put the chopping in there, the cleaning, the washing. So um it's 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 practice. That's all it is. It's practice, and it's really therapeutic. Just being in the kitchen cooking. Um, I really smell this um, in a in a good way. <laughs> um, and if you don't want this to stick to the pan, because you're pretty much sautéing it and making the mushroom a little bit more um, browner, <laughs> um, just keep adding little drops of water, and then it'll. Then it won't stick. Then you'll be good. It, it will slide off so easily. So don't worry. Water is the secret. It's like when you wash your dishes, you just add some water. Water is your best friend. And often we are dehydrated. Um, that's one thing when it comes to inflammation. People who have stiff joints, um, they don't realize that they're dehydrated, or maybe they were having too much um, caffeine or soda, and it was. Um, really dumping out all the water they needed and then they end up having stiff joints so really pay attention to your water consumption and that will be part of the secret of decreasing inflammation um it really makes a difference okay these mushrooms are almost done and then we're going to do the mini king mushrooms and then last we'll add the bok choy so um we'll add this on the side let's put this in my little pineapple bowl here Got this one from Hawaii, but it's actually carved from my native country, Philippines. So in the Philippines, they have a lot of wood over there. Um, and they're really skilled at making these nice wooden bowls. You know, lots, a lot of people like the coconut bowls. They're also usually from like Costa Rica or just Asia, Philippines. Um, so that is, that's a beautiful bowl. Yeah, thank you. And I'm going to add that too. Um, so as you notice, this one, I put the nori. The next one, I'm going to be using sesame seeds, just so you can see the variety. And sesame seeds are so nice. If they're not toasted, you can toast it yourself on the skillet. Um, literally, um, just put a little bit of the uh, sesame seed. So here we go. As you notice, I use three sheets of nori for this one. For sesame seeds, for the daily recommended dose, I would usually use at least one tablespoon. Um, that really allows you to have not just um, omega-3, but also tryptophan and tyrosine, as you've seen in my previous talks, that helps build the building blocks for um, for serotonin and dopamine. That helps your, your brain health. Let me see. I love my drawers here, so I, let me find my measuring okay so this is half a yeah just put that one half a tablespoon i'm going to put a little bit more because it's going to serve um, a lot of people um and then the black sesame in case you can't find it this is also a korean i would say brand here um and this can last me a year, but I usually put it on everything. I even put it on my tofu, my sort of tofu mushrooms, put it on my, my bok choy, my veggies. I love sesame seeds and you can't go wrong with it. Um, and I toast it a little bit more. When you toast your, your seeds, um, more flavor comes out. Um, same thing if you've ever toasted like turmeric or curry, um, that also helps, um, even paprika. So I'm going to add just a little bit of paprika um, to help. And it really burns really fast. So be careful. This is extremely low heat. You turn away for a minute, you grab something and it could burn really fast. I've done that before. So just eyes on the, eyes on the spice, eyes on the, the seeds. And then, so that was paprika. And then I'll add a little bit of turmeric. That's definitely anti-inflammatory. Thousands and thousands of studies have been 
um, designed to study turmeric in all sorts of diseases. So, you know, turmeric might taste a little off to you, but um, for an Asian dish, but we'll blend it with other things. So the secret to most dishes is blend it so it offsets some of the, the bitterness that you might find in turmeric. So don't worry. So that's gonna be um, nice and toasted, okay. And this is once again gonna be for our mushroom. So let's put that mini king mushroom on there. Lots of fun. Okay, and then a little bit more water. I actually need more water, so I'm gonna escape the screen just for a second. Peace out. <laughs> I have my water filter right here. <laughs> and here I go. All right. So join me as I'm making this um, king's mushroom. Um, and now it's kind of, it's gonna change color, right? It's gonna be a little bit more orange, um, a little bit more yellow. That's gonna take some time to kind of disintegrate. And then um, on the side while I'm doing that, I'm gonna start preparing my bowls. So you know me, I'm on the go, I multitask all the time and you can too. So start getting your rice ready. Some people like to use rice um, and then put white vinegar. Um, white vinegar is not a bad thing if, as long as you, um, cause you're gonna be, it's not a lot. You know, some people are worried about the acidity. It's usually not too bad because the main per reasons why people have GERD is because of not just spicy food, but all the, the saturated fat um, that is from animal products. So I would say, you can still use white vinegar. So I'm gonna to try to find my white vinegar if I have any left. Oh, my. okay, white rice vinegar. So just a little bit of white rice vinegar. I would say just half a teaspoon is all you need. It's kind of what they do in for sushi. Um, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of the superfood um, furikake in it while this cooks over here. So. Almost done. And then I, I use two tablespoons of the superfood for a cocky. And you can make one at home, really. It's just sesame seeds um, and hemp seeds, um, chia seeds, and then toasted nori. But this makes a, a nice shortcut with the, with the mix in here. Okay. So I just put a little bit just to add flavor in every bite. Chef Ray, did you like flavor? What's like your favorite flavor? I always wonder, like, what's what's your palate all about? <laughs> because everyone has a different it's, palate, right? It's funny that you say that because it used to be all about sugar, but now I really like savory flavors better. Yeah. Flavor. I love, well, um, hmm. you know, I love, I mean, well, my, my Asian food is definitely my favorite, you know, Vietnamese, really. Yeah. Do yeah. they have a lot of that in your area? Yeah, we're so lucky. And they're not only vegan, but they're SOS free. I don't know how we got so lucky. So, oh my goodness. You know, um, the, I don't, I don't know. They just know how to make broth. It's amazing. It's like a magical elixir, how they do that, it. Up. That's terrific. Um, okay. So I'm done with my other mushroom. Um, I, I'll put this in a, on the side. Um, so you can change out pots here if you don't want to mix that turmeric flavor because it is a little bit strong. Um, and so, you know, I think I'll just change that out because then the colors will change. And I just want the a simple bok choy with garlic. That's all I want. And so we can build out the bowl after that last step. Um, but you literally can make Buddha bowls really easily. You can make it into like a Mexican bowl or, you know, Latin American bowl by putting salsa on top, homemade salsa, or you can put mango on the side. You really can put um, different ingredients in your Buddha bowl. I like to sometimes put either kimchi if I'm going for Asian or if I want something more, um, I would say Mediterranean, um, you can, or you know, different, I would say there's um, that one, what is that called? You know, sauerkraut, like sauerkraut's really good. Or like, I, I love beet sauerkraut as well. Add that purple. That's really good. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side. 
um, and get another get another pop. There we go. Um, and then right now it's cherry season. Who's loving cherries right I now? Know, I, I know. I know. We're so happy. This is it's such a short time of the year, you know. Yeah. Fresh There's cherry. so many. So many good ones out there. Which ones do you like? Because there's like, you know, the dark red. And now I have here these, these pink um, and yellow ones. I like the dark red ones the best. Yeah, they're great. Um, and I know my, my aunt, she has her garden. And now they're apricots and the peaches are coming out. Okay, so this is going to get warm really fast. So gonna add this and then this is the last part with the garlic and then here is the bok choy add that on and so this is high heat now with bok choy it cooks really fast you're gonna see that um so once it's the water starts bubbling up then you start putting the bok choy in so let's give it a couple 30 seconds what's your favorite fruit Fruit? Day during this time of the year <laughs> well, it's got to be cherries right now fruit for sure because they're they, because they're so rare you know yeah I know it's so and they're kind of hard to find my patient gave me a nice big box like I, they live in Stockton and it's part of a farm um and they're so fresh and it's interesting because she put them in these bags but she didn't seal them so I she wanted them to breathe more because you know how cherries go bad so fast not here because we eat them so fast. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great. Um, so here's the bok choy. So while that's cooking, we're gonna um, let's pick a bowl. Um, I'll have two bowls here, just so we have two different demos. Um, here, use this. So we'll put the rice on the bottom. And literally you can put it a third full or some people like half full, so they need a little bit more. Um, you know, this is great for lunch or dinner. Um, really filling. And so kind of put this on the bottom and then I'm gonna start to put the, the, the mushroom, the shiitake mushroom with the nori on the side here. Oh, it smells so good. And then we'll put the carrots on the other corner. And then we'll have the little, little king mushrooms with the turmeric. So some people put just four things on their Buddha bowl and that's totally fine. Just use what you have. Some people load up and maybe put eight things, but the main thing is that you have a nice grain um, and pick a mushroom and a, and a cruciferous vegetable. You can add, if you wanted some more um, mixed veggies in there, some raw um, vegetables, you can put that on the side as well. So, so far it looks like this. Um, and then we'll be adding our bok choy. And then, you know, we can start preparing this. So rooted vegetables are another one that not only keeps us nice and satisfied, but it is anti-inflammatory too. It has, this one's purple. Um, I love the purple one. It's, you know, Japanese cultures have it, Filipino cultures, but anywhere, like you can get it at Sprouts or Whole Foods, anywhere in your um, closest market. You can get the either the red sweet potato. This is more of a yam. Well, are those are those the Hawaiian ones or the? Yes, um, similar. I love those. Yeah, oh my goodness, they smell so good. Um, and this one, I I steam overnight. You can roast them too, but I like to steam it because it's softer. It's mushier. I'm a textured girl. Um. How about you, Chef AJ? Do you are you a texture person? I love absolutely, all your absolutely. That's why I never liked oatmeal because I don't like the texture. Right. It's too oh. mushy. So kind of make these circles. We'll put them in there, and you can eat the skin. Don't have to peel the skin off. That's really yummy. Okay. 
think the bok choy is almost done. So don't be scared about adding a lot of water to the bok choy um, because you want it to steam a little bit. Um, that allows it to soften it up a little bit more. So here we go. It's about halfway done and just mix it out in there. And, you know, sometimes I like to peel each one, like each leaf off because it's easier to eat. Um, because nobody wants like, you know, with us, all our plant-based lovers, just when it comes to our sisters and brothers who are plant-based, sometimes we get the greens in our teeth. So um, I like to either cut my veggies really thinly or um, just make sure that they're, some of them are cooked down a little bit. But like I said, this can be uh, both a raw and a cooked dish. So you can add some nice cooked ones and then some raw veggies on the side if you wanted to. There's no harm in that. Whatever your gut can tolerate, right? So, and don't worry, you know, sometimes people feel that extra fiber or extra plant-based eating might disrupt their, their microbiome. I would say it's, you just have to train it. You have to do it one phase at a time and really work with a skilled plant-based physician or registered dietitian or coach who really understands what you're going through. Um, communication is the key. Try not to do it alone um, because it can be overwhelming and you might be discouraged and you might think you're allergic when you're pretty maybe not even allergic. You just need to get the right combination of foods and the timing of how you're eating your foods or how you're cooking them. Sometimes if you peel your fruits or vegetables, maybe you won't be as allergic to it. So everyone's different, right? It's very complex as you learn from all those talks we did about even histamine foods to, to watch out for if you're going, if you have things such as MCAS. How was the talk with um, Micah and Dr. Yu last time? I'm sorry I wasn't there, but I know he talked about fatigue syndrome, chronic Absolutely. fatigue. He was fabulous. It's fun that we can get sometimes both of you and sometimes one of you. We actually have a few more questions if you have time. I, I saw one in the chat, but I want to get to the ones that were mailed in in advance. Sure. If it's okay with you. So this one is from uh, Lucy. She was diagnosed with MS at age 52. She'd been lean and fit all her life, but overindulged on dairy for years. She adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle last summer. She's been 100% compliant. Her symptoms are worsening in spite of this. And even since being on disease modifying therapy the last year and a half, she's in the process of seeking a second opinion from a new neurologist and seeing a lifestyle medicine doc. Do you have any thoughts on water fasting or any other recommendations? She could see you in person or virtually too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. And thank you for sharing your story. I know it's not easy with MS. Sometimes Getting the diagnosis of MS is difficult because, you know, not only MRIs are taken of the spine, but sometimes um, fluid from the spinal cord. I would say just really make sure that it is truly MS once again, you know, getting a good neurologist, but even you know, Dr. Yu, he's a rheumatologist. He works on the inflammation part. So um, I would say suggest seeing him um, and seeing what other methods, because it's not just diet alone. Um, you know, food is medicine, but also we need to look at other factors, other labs, um, dig a little deeper because um, we, once again, what is your trigger? Um, that's the most important thing. Sometimes with traditional allopathic medicine, they, they start, back, they start, at the end. So they, they only see what you're dealing with now. They don't really go back in time. Um, even ask about um, how you were born, vaginal or a C-section, or they don't necessarily ask about your infection history, or maybe they're not asking about even some type of stress, disruption, um, trauma, you know, that's all in there. Um, and that contributes to inflammation. So I would say really get a, a good doctor who can ask those specific questions. You know, I don't ever like to lose hope um, whenever we're doing this, because sometimes it's not about completely reversing the disease. Sometimes it's just um, managing it, minimizing the disease, minimizing the frequency of flares. Um, so it doesn't progress to, you know, sadly, some patients aren't able to walk or have difficulty um, 
using the bathroom. Um, so some incontinence issues, but I would say if you, I know there's the wonderful um, documentary, The Blue Code with Dr. Sarai Stancic, a great friend of mine. She talks about her plant-based story and you know that that was definitely for her, um, for her, her journey. But like I said, it's not one size fits all. There might be some other things that maybe there's other diagnoses um, happening. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we've got one more, a disease I think that's rare. She's saying, I haven't heard about it. She's from Germany. Her name's Janine. Hi, and Janine. She <laughs> asked for the best diet or the best foods for someone suffering from ITP and diabetes type 1. The, di the ITP isn't being treated due to complications with insulin needed mm -hmm. for diabetes treatment. The worst symptom of ITP is the consistent tiredness. Maybe you could say what ITP is because I've never heard of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's the idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura. Um, you, it may be because there's a lot of um, abbreviations <laughs> that mean different things in medicine. If you can spell it out so I know exactly um, what you have. Um, but I know the type 1 diabetes, that's an audit, you know, the autoimmune component. Both of them are autoimmune. Um, and so I wonder if did I wonder if they did genetic testing on you um, or um, we call it SNPs. Um, these are variants of the gen the gene that help us understand how we are metabolizing not just food but supplements and medications. Um, so that might be a good place to start. Um, and with with these types of autoimmune diseases, they can be tricky, right? Because you people don't know which one to treat, but it's always about the underlying inflammation. And once again, the, and sometimes going into genetics and what's driving, um, is it driving the abnormal labs or driving abnormal symptoms? But um, I, I'm sorry for the, the complexity of that. Feel free to add more to that question if you have um, some more details. Yeah, I don't, you know, it was submitted in advance. So oh, I don't, oh, it's okay. I don't know if she's watching live, unfortunately, but maybe she could contact you for, um, you know, a consult. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Here's a question though, from a live viewer. I saw it a minute ago, uh, Layla. So she had explanted, I think breast implants explanted. Mm hmm uh, she started sweating again. What should she be eating to help detox the chemicals from the implants, the biofilm that leached into her body? Great question. You know, um, so I, I've seen a couple of patients that come to my clinic with silicon implants or just any other type of implants with older or newer material. And, you know, it, it is a foreign body. So everyone um, has different responses to it. Sometimes people feel uh, irritation or pain or sweating or going through their lymph nodes or sometimes constrictions. So meaning um, even the shape of their breast might change um, because there is a capsule that forms around the foreign material or the silicon implants. So, you know, there are I don't want to give specific medical advice, but there are medications um, that are used to help break down the the capsule, um, or or even if you if we're talking about the same thing, some biofilm is similar in that way. Um, and you know, what is the biofilm? Is it because of scar tissue or because of the immune system um, naturally protecting you, or is it because of yeast or something else? Um, it can be a, a really complicated question, but I think it's a worthy question to get an. Um, see a doctor for because even at Dr. Lifestyle, because there are certain medications and supplements to break that biofilm down. Thanks. So um, this is the Buddha bowl here. Um, I put the bok choy on the side. You can really be generous with that because I love refills of bok choy on my bowl. Um, it really goes a long way. Okay, so it's pretty much almost complete. Um, what I do like to do is add, again, my favorite, adding more sesame seeds um, just gives it an extra crunch um, on top. Just a little bit um, there. And then you can add a little bit of the a shaker on top if you like, more natural iodine. and 
um, natural salts from that and you can add nori so when you go to restaurants they usually put like these little squares on the side you can definitely do that on your bowl so we're going to put that on the side here um so we're going to put this on the side like this and then we're going to also put you can put some mango um cubes on the side um i prepared some right here does anyone else have any questions how does it look, Chef AJ? Would you want a bite or a scoop? <laughs> I absolutely want you to cook for me, but I'm not near you anymore. So you'll have to come over. I know. Do you I do love classes for your patients? Um, you know, I so I have little courses, um, little teaching kitchens, um, like once a year. <laughs> I probably could be doing it a little bit more often, but I do a lot on Instagram. Like I do Instagram lives or I show short videos online nice so here's my mangoes on this side so i love the sweet mango it's mango season you know there's different ones like kent mangoes are from the indian culture and then we have the manila mangoes from like the philippine culture those are the smaller yellow ones so i'll just show you so this is beautiful the kent and this is like the filipino one so different sizes diff i like mine soft some people like it a little crispy and green and tart um for buddha bowls i like it a little sweet um natural sweet right it's so yummy on this side okay so here we go so this is the bowl um, that's anti-inflammatory, a mixture of your mushrooms, carrots, sweet potato, or yam, um, and then some bok choy and some nori and mango. And then that's really complete. It's really nice and yummy. You can make bulk it up and make it for a couple of days and put them in different containers and it should last at least a day or two. Um, and that will keep its freshness and also keep your gut happy, your brain, right? All this healthy brain, gut food, but also immune system. And so hope you enjoyed this. I'm at Dr. Melissa's Kitchen and YouTube. So you can see more recipes there and also on Instagram. I love it. And the thing is, is there's not really a recipe. You showed the technique. I mean, you know, it, it, it's flexible. People can use a different mushroom, a different, you know, a different grain, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the way I, I teach my patients is learn that sense of being comfortable with food and different ingredients. Be comfortable by knowing, you know, what you like first. If it's you want to learn how to make brown rice, start with that. And then if you're comfortable with that, you can put some quinoa um, and then try different sweet potatoes because sometimes people get a little bored with some some of them. So change up the color. It's really a visual texture experience. Um, and then if you want a little bit of a different like mushroom right every day it's never boring in the kitchen <laughs> there's always something to add and and try um and then with you know on my website i have usually specific um i would say measurements but you know really it's really individual because everyone has this sense of what makes them not only feel good but what gives them that satisfaction Great. Thanks. A couple more questions in the chat, if you don't mind. Lucy, yes. Lucy, who had the MS question, thanks you for answering. And she says, do you have any thoughts about water fasting specifically for MS? Um, great question. Um, you know, I have to look at, I haven't seen a lot of specific studies on MS and water fasting, but I know faith centers, which I've been to, such as True North, um, even the Fasting Escape virtually. Um, the, the main idea behind why water fasting works is because you are using um, the mTOR enzymes and you're having this anti-inflammatory cascade of release of cytokines that helps fight um, inflammation. Um, and it's always, you know, it. I always like to know how, you know, how your labs are doing and how advanced is your disease. Um, and because that can really determine the type of treatment, if it's water fasting or a combination of intermittent fasting and, and whole food plant-based, what's going to work? Um, and supplements, you know, um, you know, there are certain supplements that can help inflammation that you may not be getting from your food because you're not preparing that, or you might not be tolerating it. So, um, I would say one step at a time, water fasting is still a great tool. Just make sure it's, you know, you're, you let your doctors know, and I'm sure wherever you decide to go, they're going to look at your whole case. 
And, you know, she can get a, a free consult with Dr. Goldhammer if she wants to discuss her particular. Oh, yeah, that's can. right. He's a that's good. On this show. And someone also ty- uh, typed in the chat that ID, ITP was idiop- idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Yay. That's- okay. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I have a patient um, who has that too. Um and once again, it's really tricky because it's about how the body is metabolizing certain, um, I would say, in- ingredients or specifically minerals and vitamins. So we it takes some extra genetic testing to figure out which one to treat first. Um, with with medicine, especially in our clinic, we have life cell, integrated, functional. The reason why we have so many tools is because there are... Um, for example, mystery things that happen in people's body or in medicine and you, and we got to ask why. Um, so we have to do it one phase at a time. It's definitely, um, you know, it's it, sometimes what does idiopathic mean? Idiopathic means unknown or um, they can't find the lab or the reason for it. And whenever you see idiopathic, it's usually because of inflammation. It's some autoimmune component. So if you're helping the immune system, potentially you can improve the number of platelets. Um, throm- thrombocyte opinion means it's the, the reduced amount of platelets in the body. So people may be ha- easy bruising, easy bleeding. So um, I, you know, there are certain, for example, rice bran, certain um, healthy plant-based items put in certain doses or supplements that can increase the number of platelets or even increase the number of white blood cells. I see that in my patients. A lot of vegans have low white blood cells. I don't know if you do, um, um, Chef Aja, but a lot of people do, and that could be their normal baseline. Um, but sometimes too low of a WBC um, can be signs of an autoimmune disease such as lupus. So it, we look at the whole picture um, and and there are certain ways to help support and bring up the immune defense, like the white blood cells, the platelets, the sonophils, they're all part of the army, the military of the immune system. And so we definitely look at those too as well. Great. Uh, Johnny wants to know, when you have a particularly challenging case, do you and Dr. Yu work on it together? Yeah, you know, that's great. We do. We, we share. Um, so we have patients that um, see both of us often because I you know that Dr. Yu is great in the rheumatology aspect um, and autoimmune, so joints, all the complexities, even molds and even, and Lyme and other things. And I, I look at hormones, I look at um, depression, anxiety, um, even gut health. Um, so we both have different expertise that complement each other. And we, we do um, have shared visits. That's kind of the fun. We work together and we see patients together. That's great. And do you cook together? <laughs> <laughs> we do. He'll laugh because he knows I do most of the cooking because I kind of either take over and he and he likes to just watch me or film me or, or uh, do other things. Um, but he can. He's really good at cooking like just s- simple miso soup, like miso soup um, with a hot pot style, kind of keep it simple. I like complexity of dishes and trying new fun recipes. I'm the one that collects cookbooks. <laughs> Um, and the cookbook, um, sometimes I, it's like a textbook to me because I like analyze everything and I like to memorize and, and see what works for uh, plant-based eating. Someone gave me for my birthday, like a hundred recipes you must cook before you die. And it was like a really cool one, but it had like animals and seafood in it. So I, I still accepted it. I said, thank you. Thanks for the love. I'm going to study it and try to veganize it. So, um, I really appreciate cooking and the recipe experience. You cook every day for your family or do you do some kind of batch cooking? I do more batch cooking. Um, I would say I like to do it in a way where at least twice a week, that's more realistic for my schedule. So one on the weekend and then in the middle of the week, but I can cook simple, simple things. Like if I needed more broccoli, I'll do that and cook that in 10, 15 minutes um, or Brussels sprouts in my little um oven here (laughs) that's like an air fryer oven so I do that uh, on the side but you know everyone's different sometimes I freeze certain things so I can just bring that out quickly Uh, but I I definitely am a type of person who likes to mix it up but I don't mind eating the same thing too for like three days straight Micah Dr. Yu he wants a different dish every day for every meal so (laughs) he's gotta cook it then (laughs) I know (laughs) I'm just kidding. Well, this was wonderful. I'm so glad to see this uh, demonstration. It looks delicious.
Thank you. It's fun being here. Well, thank you. And if Dr. Yu was here, I'd say thank you, you, but you're not you. So. <laughs> I just Mandala you dash you. <laughs> That's true. Thanks so much, Dr. Mandala. It was a beautiful presentation. Thank you. We'll see you again. And Thank I'm you. at Dr. Melissa's kitchen. It was beautiful. Here's the bowl. And I really appreciate your time, Chef AJ. That's still great. If you could somehow get me a picture of that and email it to me, I can use it as the thumbnail because it is so beautiful. Ooh, great idea. Thank you. I'll definitely do that. It looks like a restaurant meal. Thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow a bit earlier at 8 a.m. Pacific time for the plant-based kitchenista chef, Kelly Williamson. She is going to be doing fun in the sun, tropical island kebabs and cilantro rice. Take care.